University of Maryland. And also prepare you for future success wherever your aspirations may lie in the life sciences. Uh, most importantly, we're here to answer all your questions and uh, following a brief overview of the program. So uh, presenting with me tonight is Dr. Sabrina Kramer, who's going to introduce herself in a moment. She's the Associate Director of ILS. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, I'm thrilled to tell you that we have five brilliant ILS students that are going to be uh, helping us with this panel. In fact, they are the stars of the show. Uh, we have two sophomores, one junior and two seniors who have agreed to answer your questions and share their experiences in ILS. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's uh, move to the introductions, and my screen has frozen. So give me a moment to get out of this. Uh... So we're, while we're waiting for the technology to catch up, yes. I was just going to add that our assistant director, Jayla Townsend's um, here as well, even though she's not officially presenting. Um, and just a polite reminder, to uh, mute yourselves um, until you're ready to talk with us. So there'll be lots of time to ask questions at the very end. So you can take it from here, Sabrina, introduce yourself <laughs> and we can move. Uh, thank you, Najib. So hello, my name is Sabrina Kramer. I'm the Associate Director for the Integrated Life Sciences Program. Um, I got my PhD in molecular virology at Maryland. So go Terps. Um, I teach our sophomore level course, um, honor cell biology, and I also do advising and um, I run the research program, so the internship program, um, and my research interests are science education and virology. So I'm going to go over our presenters really quick. Our presenters, um, I was going to have you hold until the end to talk about yourselves, um, if that was okay, um, but we have... Joshua Cooksey, who's a senior and a biochemistry major, um, and he just got into grad school. Yay! And helped to let me know if he decided where he wants to go. Um, Kaylin Baumiller is a bioengineer sophomore um, and is interested in medical school. And she will also have to tell us um, how she is doing with internships because she was applying for one for the summer. Yeah, still not responding to me here. Sorry. Um, do we need to switch to? I may not go into full screen mode. This may be the easiest way. Okay. Um. So while he's doing that, <laughs> Sarah Griffith is also here. Um, she is a government politics major. So one of our few non-STEM majors um, and is interested in public policy. And you just got an internship at, crap, I totally forgot. Sarah, remind me, where'd you get your internship? Um, White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. I knew it was cool. And I knew it was policy, but I couldn't remember what it was. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Sufi Law is, um, a math and comp sci double. I'm going from memory here. Um, also a sophomore, and he was just my um, undergraduate teaching assistant for cell bio last fall, um, and is interested in MD PhD. And then um, Shahana Kundu uh, is a senior, probably representing class of 2023, um, physiology and neurobiology major, um, general business minor. And she just got accepted into the uh, managed care leadership program at Cigna, um, the insurance company, and is very excited about that. So thank you to all my student presenters. Um, I appreciate you all being here and you will be up, hopefully on camera at the end, um, to answer all the wonderful student questions. Thank you, Sabrina. So just a quick overview of the UMD Honors College. Some of you may have already heard it, but the Honors College at the University of Maryland is home to uh, eight actually highly acclaimed living learning programs for students with exceptional academic talents. So those uh, honors programs, they range from two-year programs like the multidisciplinary university honors to the more focused uh, programs like integrated life sciences or ILS. 
The Honors College features small classes that are taught by outstanding faculty, an innovative learning environment, and opportunities for research and study in the Washington, D.C. area. So uh, I'd like to spend a moment actually just telling you a little bit about ILS. Let me move the pointer out of the screen. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is uh, ILS is designed to really help prepare you for future success uh, uh, in and your acceptance in very well respected professional schools, medical schools, or wherever your aspirations may lie. When we do that in four different ways, our four pillars are first a supportive community. So the development of an inclusive community that's focused on both living and learning together is a central mission and probably the most valued aspect of ILS. The inclusive community is designed to help the students with their sometimes rocky transition to university. So we provide the safety net that many of our students need and it helps increase your engagement and and we help you build that launching pad, actually, from which you can explore the fantastic life transforming opportunities on campus. Uh, what does the community mean? You live together. You're going to take the same ILS courses for the first year and a half and you're going to study together. And of course, this is in addition to the mentoring and to the advice that you get from the program staff. Uh, of course, you support each other through all of this. Uh, Another pillar of us is the accelerated nature of our academic program, which starts with sophomore level classes. So the students who are invited to join ILS would have already received a full credit for freshman biology, either through AP or some other mechanism. Uh, of course, the remaining ILS courses, they're specifically structured to enhance active learning and small group collaborations, which have been shown to enhance active learning. Uh, we do help facilitate research opportunities on UND campus as well in various federal research institutes and local schools of medicine. In fact, research is, in, uh, is a requirement. We strongly believe that rigorous scientific inquiry and the development of cutting edge research skills are central goals in our mission. So we actually will guide you, actually Dr. Kramer will guide you through an authentic research internship uh, relevant to your career goal. Even though many of our students will not pursue uh, research as a major component of their future career, learning how to engage in scientific reasoning will allow you to incorporate research findings in your professional career, no matter what the, your career is. And finally, an important component that Dr. Kramer will talk about also later is the uh, service component. All ILS students are uh, required to dedicate a portion of their time and talent to the serving the local community uh, in their first year. Uh, typically, those projects are self-selected and uh, that experience will help you. It helps provide a holistic uh, uh, perspective to your rigorous coursework. It uh, encourages the students to learn from people whose backgrounds are different from their own. And finally, it helps uh, encourage an inclusive relationship building. So we're quite purposeful in our effort to encourage students to work together in order to better facilitate, facilitate their learning. And uh, the results speak for themselves. Uh, we have very high success rates for our students when they apply to professional schools. Our students have won many national and international awards for academic excellence, Rhodes, Marshall, Goldwater, Church of Scholarships. And uh, right underneath the picture, we have a quick breakdown of the most students who are in the ILS program. About 55% typically are seeking an MD eventually. About 5% want to go to do an MD PhD. Uh, about 15% go on to graduate school to work on a PhD and another 15% uh, join the full workforce. Another 12% will seek professional degrees such as public health, etc. So now I hand it over to Dr. Kramer, who's going to tell you a little bit about our curriculum and uh, some of the other aspects of the program. Great, thank you, Najib. Um, so we have required first year programming. So that includes our 100 and 102 courses, which are introduction to the university um, and where we house our service learning credits. Um, one of the things, so the, the service learning component was actually student driven. Um, after the first year of the program, the students came to us and asked for the service learning component. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and later, we've expanded it um, to about 25 hours, which is housed in the HLC 102 program. 
or, um, sorry, course, and um, students get to choose the service provider that they want to work with. Um, so that's actually been very popular. Um, in addition to that, there's HLSC 208, which is our quantitative integrative concepts in biology. So essentially, that's an introduction to um, computational biology, and um, Dr. El Saeed teaches that. And then our second semester first year course is genetics and genomics. Um, your second year, you can choose which courses you take. So you can choose any two of those courses in any order in this, um, your sophomore year. You could take two in one semester or one in either semester. Um, but I teach the cell physiology and biology course. Um, you could take English 390. So that's junior level English, which um, is junior level English as a requirement for graduation, um, public health courses. Um, we have a ethics course. So the topics in scientific integrity and medical ethics. Um, honors, bioinformatics, and then every three years we um, do a um, study abroad course during winter semester, which is a science history course, which is 10 days in London. Um, so that's our HLSC 217, and that's a gen ed history course. And you can see um, <clears throat> our instructors along the bottom. So Dr. Pick teaches our genetics course. You can see me, I teach cell biology. Um, Jayla is in charge of our 100, 102 courses. Um, Dr. Brantley Hall um, teaches uh, bioinformatics, and you can see Dr. El Said down there as well. Okay, so course preparation, friends. Um, we're one of the few programs that have um, a requirement, and what this translates to is there are so many students coming out with advanced um, biology preparation. Um, that's part of the impetus for where the program um, came from. So it is, we need you guys to be prepared to have one biology credit. So this is um, our equivalent of um, Bio 170, which is our molecular biology um, intro course. And so that can be either through a score of four or five on AP biology exam, a score of six or seven on the IB um, higher level exam, or it can be through dual enrollment or community college credit. Um, if you have questions about that, we're happy to answer it. Um, but what that means is when you fill out your preferencing for, form, please include that information. Um, if you are taking the AP bio exam this May, that is okay. Give us their scores on your other exams and we can use that to make a prediction of how well you're gonna do on your AP bio exam. And if you don't get in to um, ILS and you really wanna become part of the program, um, all students in the Honors College can transfer among the programs after your first year. Um, so if you're really still interested in it, um, but you don't get credit for Bi-Sci 170, that is okay. Um, do well in your intro level bio courses and then um, apply to transfer in after your first year. Okay. I apologize. It has been the month of colds. I have two kids, um, one in elementary school, one in middle school, and um, the colds have been going around uh, this month. Okay, research experiences. So I... I um, am in charge of the internship program um, and I will meet with students in their HLSC 100 course to go over everything from how do you write a resume to how do you find internships to how do you talk to professors. Um, I will step you through the whole process. Um, we have lots of resources available, including an entire database of um, upperclassmen and ILS who have pre-agreed to talk to you about their experiences, um, databases of different internships, but you get to choose what internship you apply for based on your interests um, and to do it in whatever semester fits your schedule. So it's 240 hours, which equals out to about um, two semesters uh, part-time, so about 10 hours a week if it's during the semester or a six-week program um, during the summer. So you can choose based on your schedule, your interests. Um, so some of the examples are already on the screen. So we have students who have done their internship at the Smithsonian, USDA, NIST, the School of Medicine, um, Children's National, National uh, NIH. Um, on campus, we have students who do their internships at Hopkins. Um, and for all of our out-of-state students, um, you have the flexibility to find an internship experience near home as well. And we will work with you um, based on that. So it's really kind of what you're interested in. And we've had people do um, in silica, so completely computational projects, to wet lab projects, to survey-based projects, so they're working with human development or the School of Public Health or hearing and speech sciences. Um, so it really kind of depends on your interests and what's going to work for 
um, your career goals because we want this to, to be something that's going to help you along your way. Service learning. So that is an important part. And again, um, this is something that the students came to us about. Um, so this is built into your HLSC 102 and students propose where they want to do their um, service. And we bring in our upperclassmen to talk about the service organizations they're really excited about. Um, it's actually been really popular to have our service panels in. So students take advantage of a wide range of opportunities to do service. So it can be everything from on campus. So um, working with the Food Recovery Network, which um, collects food from our cafeterias and dining halls on campus and distributes it to local food kitchens. <laughs> um, we have an alternative break program um, where students spend part of their winter or spring breaks working with different um, service partners, either in Maryland or outside of Maryland. We have an alternative spring break program, which has been on hold during COVID that we are hoping to get started back up again. Um, where we partner with the Karen Beasley Sea Turtle Rescue Center um, in Topsail Island, North Carolina during um, the during spring break. So fingers crossed that we can get that back up and running again. Things have been on pause because of COVID. And <laughs> excuse me, many of our students um, also start their own service organizations because they find something that they are very excited about. Um, so one of our current seniors started the Every Child program or project. Um, which offers uh, tutoring and this um, ramped up during COVID to offer online tutoring for students who were taking all their courses online during COVID. Um, so Rising Researchers, which reaches out to local high schools to get students excited, um, high school students excited about research and careers in research, um, Terps for Service Members, um, Public Health Out, well, founding our local Public Health Without Borders, um, 110 Health. There's a whole wide range based on what people are interested in. Um, and they've created these service organizations that continue on after they leave the university. Okay, so this gets us to the end of our official presentation about ILS, and we wanted to spend the rest of our time answering your questions. So we have five of our students, plus all of our staff here, to answer your questions. Um, we have a range of sophomores, through seniors, um, a range of uh, different majors and experiences. So I wanna encourage you, if you're comfortable, to turn your camera on, unmute, ask your question, um, and we'd be happy to answer that. Um, so, and before we get started, would my ILSers, my current ILSers be willing to introduce yourselves since I kind of hastily introduced you earlier? Um, and we can start with, um, Shahana, I see you just popped to the top of my screen, if you don't mind going first. So Shahana, Joshua, Sarah, Sufila, and then Caitlin. Does that work? Awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Can't, can't hear you, sir. Yeah, can you Shahana, your sound is going in and out. Okay. Can you hear me now? Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shahana. I'm super excited to see you here today. My, um, I'm a senior this year, uh, Dr. Kramer mentioned, a uh, neurobiophysiology major. And as Dr. Kramer mentioned, after this year, I'll be um, moving to Chicago working for Cigna. So if you're interested in the healthcare industry, healthcare business, that's kind of where I'll be. So shoot me any questions. And I'm happy to answer any questions on research, service, um, HLC 100. I was a teaching assistant for it. So, yeah. Thank you, Shahana. Go ahead, Joshua. Hi, um, my name Oh, you got muted, friends. Hi, my name is Joshua. Um, I'm a senior biochemistry major. Um, and after this year, I'm planning to pursue a PhD in either biochem or chemistry. Um, so I can answer any of your questions about research. Um, I was also a TA for one of the ILS courses, um, and I'm happy to meet everyone. And have you decided on a school yet? No, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sarah. So hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a sophomore and a government major, and I'm actually currently working on adding a biology major as a dual degree. And then, as mentioned, I currently have an internship at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, 
And I'm also an RA. So this is actually the Plata Hall that I'm in right now. Hey, uh, good evening, guys. Um, can you guys hear me? Okay, awesome. Uh, my name is Safi Allah. I'm a math CS dual degree. Um, I'm a junior this year. Um, I guess I was also a TA for cell biophysio um, with Dr. Kramer. Um, I guess I'm also a commuter from Gaithersburg. So if you have any questions about commuting and ILS, how that works out, uh, feel free to ask me. Um, right now I'm interning at Rutgers and uh, the chemical engineering department at UMD. So if you have questions about that, uh, feel free to ask. Hey guys, I'm Kaylin. Um, I am a sophomore bioengineering major, and I plan to pursue an MD PhD, hopefully after these next two and a half years. And then um, right now I'm basically working in a bioengineering lab. So if you have any questions about working on labs on campus, or also living in the Plato Hall because this is my second year here. Kayla was going out just a tad bit. Um, I wanted to throw out there, um, because Safi uh, mentioned commuting, um, we do have a living requirement. So all first year students are required to live on campus in floors eight and nine in La Plata Hall. And the second year you have the option to live there or anywhere else you would like. Um, but we do reserve a space for you, your sophomore year in La Plata, if you so choose. So what questions do you have for us? We are happy to answer them. Okay, so I am going to punt that to Shahana as our senior. So John, Katie asked, can you tell us more about what happens after the first two years? Um, in terms of involvement with ILS or ILS requirements, uh, what's the vibe there? <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, we have it projected on TV right now so we can hear better. Um, I was wondering like more what happens as you go on through ILS, like in your past, in your later two years, after you don't have to live in the Honors College anymore, um, where do you go from there? Can you still live in the Honors College or how does that work? Thank you. Yeah, John, that's a really great question. So um, after the two years, you can, ILS is really like what you make of it. I have personally, kept really in touch with the program, you know, as a teaching assistant, um, I hang out with Dr. Kramer, chat with her all the time, um, but also you can also have your research continue onwards. Um, ILS has, is like really lenient with uh, typically like how long it takes to get your research done. So um, you can continue on with your research, um, get your citation later on um, in your maybe fourth year, if that's not how long it goes. Um, you can also continue on with your service learning if you really like it, if you really like the org that you're doing it with. Um, and on top of that, I also wanna say the friends that you make in the program, like a lot of the times they're the same people in your major, in your classes, you still stay with them. I know I personally am still roommates with my freshman year roommate from ILS, as well as another girl I met in ILS. So it's really, um, you have that community. And also the faculty is always there to answer any questions that you have, regardless of whether you're living in La Plata or beyond. They'll, there's events that you can go to that really connect you with um, faculty or research that's happening on campus um, that you can always touch base on. And faculty is always there. So yeah, that's my two cents. Um, love to hear if Josh wants to speak to it as well, because he's a senior too. Um, yeah, I just like to say, like, I totally agree with everything Shahana said. Um, I also saw like another question in the chat about how it, like, it prepares you for post, po how the program prepares you for post graduation plans. And I think it's kind of related to what you asked, John. Um, so I, I definitely still consult Dr. Kramer a lot about career advice. And she's been super helpful with my uh, PhD applications. Um, she actually wrote my re letters of recommendation. So if you stay connected to the program, it's like a pretty easy way to get connected to professors who could possibly write you letters of recommendation if you're planning on doing like higher, edu higher education or going to professional school. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. I was going to throw in, we are technically a two-year program, but we end up with people being connected for all four years as they get ready to go into professional school or jobs or wherever else they end up going. Um, I didn't want people walking away thinking we were a four-year program. Technically two. You can finish in two, I promise. Um, so there was a question, and I was going to punt this to Sarah about being a non-STEM major um, as one of our, as our few non-STEM, although you're picking up the bio secondary major, um, how did that work with being an ILS? So when I came in, I was planned to be pre-med and I still am. So what that route might look like is very up in there at the moment. But so I think part of that was easy for me to be an ILS because um, it kind of helped make sure I was meeting some of the checkpoints I needed, some of the classes I need to take. And then it kind of got me this community of people that were also in those classes in similar fields and heading that way. And it was my way of staying connected with um, the more STEM side of things and the pre-medical type of community, um, knowing I'd spend half my time on the other side of campus, quite literally, um, as a Gov major. And I know someone asked something about like how hard it is. So I think for me, it's about looking at my classes. Um, I have a really big passion and interest for government. So that kind of helps because I really enjoy it and want to be taking those classes. But it's also a way of balancing my course load because a lot of STEM classes have a lot of exams and um, it's a very different way of thinking. So when it gets to be finals time, I can I will have the lighter final schedule and compared to my friends because I have a lot of papers and stuff for all my gov classes compared to some of the exams and stuff they're taking. So the timeline of classes is just a little bit offset, which I personally like because it makes it a little easier. And then um, sometimes you focus on more things. Like right now with my internship, I'm actually not taking any bio classes um, and really like lighten my load because of that, because I want to be in person. I want to get the most out of the experience. Um, so then next semester, it's going to be a lot more like STEM and bio focus to kind of adjust for that. So it's kind of just knowing where you can move things around and how to balance it out that makes it work. I'm going to hop in with one answer, Sabrina, if I can, to one question that was posed by Barnali with regards to his or her interest in biostats and the data science and how can ILS uh, help? So in ILS, increasingly so this year and going forward, we're emphasizing inquiry, uh, critical thinking, quantitative reasoning, and hands-on analysis in the context of molecular biology, the life sciences, genomics, and genetics. So I think we will bring uh, quantitative science by stat to molecular biology and gen genomics. So I hope this answers your question. Also going to throw in there that Dr. El Sayed works on computational biology <laughs> and teaches our course on computational biology. OK. So um, there was a question by Aeon. I um, apologize if I didn't pronounce your name right. Um, will the ILS citation be affected by graduating early, um, even when all courses are completed? So technical question, I'll throw that. I will answer that one. Um, if you graduate early and you complete all your requirements, great, awesome. Um, I have uh, students doing that this semester. Um, Zoe, who is my TA last fall, is graduating a full year early, um, and she finished her citation requirements. So it's doable. It's meant to be done in two years. Um, and if you want to finish a year early, that's fine. Um, it really kind of depends on your own individual progress, credits that you've transferred in. Um, I will say if you are thinking about pre-med, um, it is hard to do three years and then go straight into med school, but that is a longer conversation we can have um, about doing that. So just something to think about. But for ILS, Great, awesome, you can totally do it in two, uh, it's planned to be in two years, if you take three, that's fine too. Um, and there was another question um, from Emily, and this is to any of my students who wanna answer. So can you talk about culture of competition versus collaboration and maybe the benefits and drawbacks of being in ILS opposed, as opposed to the General University Honors College? I know. who. Go ahead, Shahana. 
So that's a really good question. Um, and I know that, you know, a lot of questions can come up when everybody is really STEM focused. And I'll just preface this by saying everybody in ILS is incredibly intelligent, incredibly hardworking. Um, some of the coolest people you'll ever meet um, with a varied interest. So quite honestly, naturally, everyone in this program that I've spoken to does feel imposter syndrome in the program. But the program, faculty, everyone does everything that they can to make sure that you know that you're here for a reason. And also, from my personal experience, I've, like I said, like my closest friends are from the program. We've helped each other through genetics homework, through um, all of our requirements. Orgo 1, we struggled through that together. Orgo 2, Biochem. So really, everybody's kind of, from what I've seen, most people's competition is with, with themselves and they collaborate with others to be able to achieve those goals that they set for themselves. Um, that's, I I'd love to hear what other people think. I would say another benefit of the program, um, just as a fun fact, is the really cool stuff you get. <laughs> I have my ILS mug right here. I have a beaker mug from ILS and most of the other honors colleges are kind of jealous of us because of that. Just a fun fact. Erin, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to piggyback off of what Sana said. Um, I didn't feel a lot of competition within like um, our group, I guess, because we didn't make it a point to compete with each other. We made it a point to collaborate with each other. And I feel like just working with each other, that, that it like helped us achieve our goals and it helped us um, do better than what we would do if we competed. Because with competition, you always have those like feelings of like, oh, I'm not good enough or whatever. But with collaboration, it's like, oh, this new opportunity opened up and then everybody jumps on it and everybody helps each other get through it. So it just really, it just helps is what I'm saying. It's it's not very um, competition based. So as a complete education geek, I will throw in there that we do actually design our courses to be collaboration based, not competition. So um, we encourage everyone to work in groups. We encourage everyone to help each other out. Um, and there's this myth of like professional or graduate school admissions where there's only like six seats and you have to outcompete someone for those six seats. That's not actually how admissions works. Because um, the people you're working with are gonna be your colleagues. And so it's in your best interest to work well with them because um, you're not there to outcompete them. If you are competitive for professional school, you're competitive and that's it. Um, so we, we, I will say from the curriculum side, we try really, really hard um, to try to get students to work together and understand that we're all in this together um, and we want everyone to be successful. So we'll throw that one out there. And then there was two questions. And by the way, did any of the other ILSers want to add anything before I move on? Because I just realized I totally steamrolled that. Okay, um, there is a question in from Cynthia, two questions. She asked both about the IB biology exam, which I'll answer, and then about um, where is La Plata. So first, um, if you're taking IB HL this semester um, or this year, take your exam in spring and make sure we have that information as well as any information you have on other um, IB exams you've taken when you fill out your preferencing form. Um, and that's what we need. So. La Plata location, would any of my students want to add in there? I can definitely speak on the La Plata location. So because I, li I live like in a dorm for the second year, I specifically chose La Plata because of its location. It has a seat, which thank the Lord, because I could not survive if it didn't. And then it's also like right next to the gym. It's right next to like Xfinity Field. It's like a good, like maybe like eight minute walk to Xfinity Field. So if you do like a club sport, you can, it's just, your practice fields are just like right there. And it's like 10 minutes away, I think from like the STEM buildings, country building, it's like eight. And if you really speed walk it, maybe like seven or five, but it's like really close to everything you could possibly need. It's also close to like the North Diner, Yahentamitsi. It's a little far from the South, but like, I don't really go there that often. So it's, it's just amazing location in my opinion. 
To add on to that a little bit, the way campus is kind of designed, it's like north and south campus. So we're on north campus and it's kind of the closest you can get to the STEM buildings, which is really great. Um, if you're like me and Gov, that's like a lot of the humanities type stuff. They're on the mall and like more on the south campus. So um, those can be a bit of a walk, but it's also a really good way to like get onto campus and things like that. Like I design my schedule in such a way that it helps like once you're there there's great study spots there's great like places to go and like try to eat um so if you design your schedule properly it's like not an issue thank you caitlin and sarah um so there was a question about ap bio exam scores um really quick we make this is based on many years of experience um but we make um, good guesses on how well you do on your AP bio exam based on other STEM related courses and exams you've taken pretty much. And that's kind of what we're looking for, which is why you should include that information when you um, fill out your preferencing forms. And there's a question about ILS courses. So they count for gen eds. It depends on which courses you count or which ones you take. Um, so our courses align with most of the STEM related majors. So anything related to life science, you're taking the required courses for that. But there are different courses that um, can match up to different gen eds. So English 390 meets the English requirement. Our study abroad course meets the history requirement. Um, but most of our courses align more directly with your major requirements, um, typically, than the gen eds. Um, I'll hop in here to answer okay. a question about internships and maybe the students can complement my answer. Is it hard to find internships? Uh, I should just highlight that there are many, many, many labs on campus. Every department has uh, uh, not anywhere from 25 to 30 faculty members, be it computer science, bioengineering, uh, three biological sciences departments, public health. Uh, and this is to just mention a few. And of course, uh, I'll just remind you, we're up the road from the FDA, down the road from USDA, NIH is nearby, and uh, and many medical schools uh, with the various laboratories. So uh, uh, students, tell them, am I lying, or is it true that uh, there's many opportunities here? I see uh, approving heads. So while if we're could... on the topic, oh, go ahead, Sophila. Yeah, I was gonna say, if I could add on to that, um, that's not an understatement, actually. Um, I guess my just anecdotal evidence, I mean, I'm not sure this is like a scientific study, but um, my research interest is machine learning and cancer pathologies, um, which is pretty niche because machine learning is relatively new um, and specifically a specific kind of machine learning, which is like uh, reinforcement learning. It's really, really niche. Um, but in the span of three years, I've landed three different internships that are relevant to the field. Um, and not only that, like I sent one cold email that said that I'm part of ILS. And that one email landed me at NCI last summer, which was one and a half years. Um, and the reason was because that PI's uh, daughter, or no, that PI's son was part of ILS. So there is a compiled list of uh, researchers or students who interned at labs, and they have the contacts of the PIs. And if you shoot just a few cold emails, you will have some incredible, incredible opportunities. So don't worry about that. Going off of that, like, you don't even have to send cold emails if you don't want to. Personally, I was like, I was a freshman like last year, so I was a little too scared to send those cold emails. So I just asked around to the older ILS kids, and I got like three or four internship opportunities out of that. And so it's just everywhere here. It really is. You just have to ask around. I was just going to add, many of our students branch out and find opportunities that directly relate to their career interests. So like I said, we've had people look in early childhood development. We've had people in here in speed science. We've had people in cognitive science. So you need to choose what's going to work for you and your interests because this shouldn't just be something you check off, you know, check a box off. It should be something that helps you understand if this is a career track that you're interested in. Um, some of our students go through research and go, oh, wait, this was way better than I thought it was going to be. I could totally do this for part of my future job. And some people get out of it and go, this was a great experience. And I totally never want to do intern, you know, research ever again. Also great. That is fine. I am so glad you figured it out in an undergrad program rather than going to grad school and figuring it out. So 
Um, but everyone has different experiences and we would encourage people to, to find the one that's gonna be right for them and their interests. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, there's a question about transfer. So if you transfer in after the first year, how does that affect your progress? Um, you essentially start, so most of our students who transfer in after the first year is because they didn't have the biology preparation. So you take the first year biology courses and then you um, start your ILS program with the rest of the entering freshmen because um, you'll be uh, at the same biology like course level. Um, and then you go through the same courses, but you can skip the introduction to university courses. Um, so you start with everyone else. You shouldn't need to repeat courses um, and um, you just have to be okay with taking courses with freshmen your first semester or your first, or your second year. Um, ooh, um, for my ILS students, how is the workload of being in this specific honor, honors program versus not? So I'm gonna assume any honors versus not being in part of honors, K, is that the, what you're asking? Yes. Okay. So I don't know if any of our students can answer that since you're all in an honors program. Uh, if you have anything to compare to, if you have friends who didn't do honors. Um, I guess, I guess what I would say to this question is like, if you're interested in to like a career in the life sciences and you want to pursue maybe med school or graduate school, you're going to have to do a lot of the stuff that ILS requires of you anyways. So it's to your benefit to, I guess, be a part of a program that provides the structure and the resources that you can take advantage to make it easier for you to do those things, um, to be a competitive applicant in the future. And I guess the last thing I would add to that point is there's, to some extent, like there's some value to having like a program that kind of certifies that you did do that in addition to the experience that you talk about in your own resume and your own personal statements whenever you write them. So I think it's not going to be that much different. Thank you. Jessica. To answer a question. Oh, sorry. To answer a question, no, if ahead, one, one is able to graduate with two honors, uh, you can get an honor citation from the Honors College, ILS, and you can also participate in an honors program if your department offers one. So often you, we have students, for example, in cell biology or molecular genetics or biology or entomology who choose to participate in the departmental honors program. And therefore you would have your ILS citation and an honors graduation from the departmental program. So there was a question from John about being in a adjacent field. So like comp sci as a major and being an ILS. Um, so so if you're allowed, you might be able to answer that. Um, I will add in, if you don't like life science at all, like if you hate biology, there are many other programs out there because you will take biology courses. Um, but Sophila, your comp sci math, if I remember right? Yeah, so I'm uh, comp sci math, uh, dual degree. Uh, so it's like math is like not even related at all. And then comp sci has some applications to CS. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's better for me to mention that in the class that I TA'd or the section that I TA'd, uh, there were like two or three CS majors out of a section of what was it, 17? No, it was like, yeah, 17-ish, right? So it was a decently high frequency, I'd say, and they excelled in the class as well. So um, it's not only is it possible, but I think it's also very interesting to see bio through the scope of computer science, and it's a very unique experience. So I can bash for that. So, Kaylin, this is a question from um, Adaku, and again, if I mispronounce your name, I apologize. Um, she said, I have previously heard you are a second year bioengineering student. How is it with balancing your major and being in this honors LLP? So I was actually really happy I ended up keeping ILS because I didn't think that there would be that much overlap with bioengineering and then like ILS, except three out of the four classes that I have to take for ILS are required in my major anyway. 
So it's really, it didn't really add much to it. And if anything, it made me more competitive against other bioengineering students because ILS pushed me to look for research at a younger age than most bioengineering students. So it honestly just helped. Balancing it, it's like a little hard, but that's just because you're kind of an engineering student, I feel like. So while most people just have like bio, there's also like math and physics getting thrown at you while you're dodging like chemistry and biology. And it's okay because it's a little hard, but honestly with time management and a lot of Google Calendar, you can do it because I'm doing it, but then I also have like club soccer and I also have like, like other clubs like BMES and then like Research and Society. So it's definitely doable. It's like 100% doable. So don't let that scare you. Just use Google Calendar and you'll be perfectly fine. So L asked how many students are in their program. So we accept anywhere between 75 and 95 students a year to kind of give you an idea of, of scope. Um, and scroll scrolling. Um, Emma asked, what did you do for your service learning requirements? Would, would people be willing to share what you guys did for your, your service uh, your service for ILS? Oh, I can start. Um, so I did Food Recovery Network, um, and that's what Dr. Kramer mentioned earlier in the presentation, just packaging leftover food from the diners and um, delivering it to homeless uh, food pantry. Um, and even though I, like I already completed my service learning fresh all the way back freshman year, it's actually something that I still do every week just because I like it. And it's I, I stuck with it, basically. So if you you should do something that you like and it, it won't feel like something you're adding on top of your work. I can speak to what I did, which um, if you haven't guessed, I'm really into science policy and like that sort of thing. So I've joined, I joined combating overdoses in rural areas and they kind of work with the opioid epidemic. And um, we actually make trips to some of the, like the rural counties and things like that to just see what we can do and try and help out. So that's what I joined and I've still stuck with it. Um, they also have a policy team that I was able to join. So it was kind of something I was already a part of and then got to use for service learning. So I volunteered with, well, I actually did a couple of things, but my main thing was I volunteered with UpChief and basically they're just like this online tutoring platform. Um, and it's like anonymous. So I really liked it because it was online. I could just do it. And also I like, I was helping people. So I definitely like that aspect. And I also um, volunteered with the pre health Society. I think we like picked up trash one afternoon and another afternoon like packaged food, I think as well. So. Um, I also did science tutoring at a elementary school in the PG County area. Um, it's not something I continued afterwards, but I did continue doing service in air other areas that I thought were like valuable to my interests and that resonated with me. Um, and I just want to say the service component in freshman year is not only incredible and special to ILS because it gets you thinking about how you can give back to your community, but it also gets you thinking and get involved in various different organizations if you choose to do something like we all did with organizations on campus, because as a freshman, it can be difficult to know at such a large university where to start. So really hearing what you want to do is a great way to delve into that. Um, similar to Kaylin and Shahana, um, I tutored online. Uh, we were part of the COVID club, so we sort of had to uh, compromise and sort of uh, also serve our community in a kind of unique time. Uh, since then, um, I've joined the Maryland Mentor Corps, which I think Shahana was alluding to, um, where we tutor uh, students in Title IX schools in PG County. Thank you, everyone. Um, I will also share that the service dog group is super popular as well, especially when they come visit class and bring the dog. Um, we've we've had some of our TAs also be working with the service 
So what they do is they work with service dogs before they're ready to go into full training. Um, so they're still kind of puppies and still getting there. And so they bring them to class and they're very popular. Um, so uh, Catherine asks, and this is for Safiela, if you're a transferring from a two-year community college. So I'm going to assume that you were doing, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so Catherine, I'm going to assume that you're doing your credits um, while in high school and you're getting um, up to 60 credits in community college. So Sophie Law actually came in with a similar um, position in terms of credits. And I don't know um, if you would mind talking to that or speaking to that. There you go. Yeah, so my experience is a pretty long-winded story, but Dr. Kramer really helped me like get through it. So Montgomery College has an early college program where you can get an associate's after high school, just for context. Um, so I came in, we were the first cohort of early college. So I came into UMD with 71 credits and my math associate's done. Um, and I didn't know what to do because I signed up as a freshman um, to, and I got into ILS. And I was like, okay, I'm, I guess I'm on the pre-med track, but I'm a math major and I have this many credits. If I graduate, I'm gonna be very young and I'm not gonna be a good med school applicant. So I rushed to Dr. Kramer's office hours and I was like, look, you have to tell me what to do here. And Dr. Kramer probably vividly remembers. I was telling her about it just like two weeks ago. Um, but that advising meeting really set up my next uh, three years, right? If I hadn't taken her advice and I'd graduated and applied to medical school with my extremely, extremely raw profile, like one internship at NIST and uh, just like math major or two, too young, I don't even know if it's legal to be 17 and apply to medical school. It shouldn't be. Um, and then I would have gotten a hard reality, reality check, right? Um, if that's the case, I suggest you do something like what I did. Um, add a second major, it will get a dual degree. It will look really cool. You can even add a third major, right? Um, like I'm this close to getting my, my bio major too. Um, so you can do that. You can have extra time for internships if you want. Um, and you'll look really cool, right? In the application process. Um, all the credits basically transfer over. It depends on the community college. Um, again, it's a really unique circumstance, but it's getting more and more common. Um, so yeah, feel free to shoot me an email if you want to talk more about it, because I know it's very intricate and intimidating. Okay. Wow. Okay, so there's still a bunch of questions left. We're going to try to go through them quickly, because I was hoping to have our um, ILSers share one of their favorite ILS memory. So that is your instruction. If you want to take a second and think about it while we get to these questions. Um, so... Anne asked, when was the last time we did study abroad? So that was actually 2019, right before everything shut down for COVID. Um, we were scheduled for this year, but we had a changeover in staff, both in the study abroad office and in ILS. Um, Jayla joined us, but we were not prepared to go do a study abroad um, in January this year. So hopefully we will run that next January, so 2024. Fingers crossed. Um, and then... So uh, based on your respective high school rigor, how is a transition to ILS um, rigor or course load? So I'm sure all of our students can speak to this. Um, I was actually gonna hand it to Shahana in three seconds because she worked with our first year students. But as someone who also works with first year students in advising, um, and also one of those people when I went to undergrad, I was like valedictorian, I was top of my class, everything in high school was easy, I got to college, and it was not easy. Um, so I would say for every student, I don't care whether it's your honors program, what program you're entering or what university you're entering, the transition from high school to college is it's trickier than you think it's going to be because there's this huge switch of learning. Um, whereas you're used to going to school eight hours a day and you do all your learning in school, the majority of your learning now happens on your own and going to class is like the highlights version. Um, and that switch and that transition is tricky. Um, learning to live with another person in itty bitty, okay, they're not itty bitty, but like small learning, you know, small spaces, right? Having a roommate, um, it's an adjustment. It can be an awesome adjustment, but it's still an adjustment. So all these things are kind of happening in addition to living from home, or lear learning how to live away from home um, and manage your schedule. So college transition is tricky for everyone everywhere. Um, but I think the question was specifically about rigor. And Shahana, since you work with our first-year students, if you don't mind chiming in, that'd be great. Absolutely. Um, just want to echo what Dr. Kramer said, you know, like, I also had a 
pretty like heavy workload in high school, but nothing could prepare me for college and like the change in how you need to study, like only having a few exams. So where you go, it will be an adjustment, but um, I will say that um, ILS, the professors are always help you. The, the ILS courses are created in a very engaging and interactive way where you get to directly interact with upperclassmen who are your teaching assistants. Um, faculty always has office hours, drop-in hours where you can always speak to them. And I also want to mention that, you know, I've worked with freshmen um, for two years now in the 100 class and um, they, ILS always emphasizes self-care um, and how to really use your time wisely when you're taking these difficult classes while not getting overwhelmed. Um, and it also provides everyone, all freshmen with direct connections with upperclassmen, not just your teaching assistants in class, but also your 100 TAs and they can connect you with people who are interested in what you are and the classes that you want to take and the classes you have taken and what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them. Um, I've been told that some of the tips that I gave that freshmen, like they were like, oh, I've never heard of that. Thank you so much. Like, um, thank you for referring me to that website. Thank you for telling me how to do this. So they're always there for you. Long story short, it will be difficult, but ILS provides you all the resources and tools that you need to succeed. Thank you, Shauna. So we are about at time. If my so my current ILSers would be willing to share one of your favorite ILS memories, um, that would be awesome. So Joshua, do you mind going first? Uh, sure, I can start. Um, so I think like my favorite ILS memory is um, probably my TA experience in ILS. So last semester I TA'd for the cell biology class for sophomores and I just had a really great time getting to know the students learning how to teach and um like interacting with like Dr. Kramer and the other TAs okay Sarah so I'd have to say one of my favorite things is I've made a lot of friends in this program um and one of the things we did is we ended up all in the same lab both last semester and this semester so now we do like post lab dinners and it's essentially whenever we get out of lab we head to one specific um dining hall and we all eat together we're usually like i don't even know how to describe it it's an absolutely crazy dinner where we're just laughing and saying whatever we want and part of the thing is that diner has UMD dairy. So we always get ice cream after lab, which is the best thing. Safila? Um, I can't believe no one mentioned this. Uh, the obstacle course. Yeah, like how can you miss that? That was fantastic. <laughs> so we'll throw out there, all freshmen participate in a challenge course on campus as part of your team building. Everyone's required. It is challenge by choice. So don't don't stress about that, um, but it is a great team building, team building experience for all of our first year students. Um, and Kaylin and then Shahana. Yeah, I was gonna say the obstacle course. I loved it. I am so deathly afraid of heights, but I was like, I have to do it like YOLO. So I did it. My heart was pounding. It was crazy, but it was so amazing. Like climbing it and like, oh my God, I'm so far up. But it was so fun. And I love that day. It was like amazing. Uh, I'll just say mine is a quintessential memory that I associate with La and ILS. So it was our genetics class homework number three. It was one of the most painful homeworks that we've ever done. <laughs> Office hours went two hours extra time. And then there was like six or seven people in my dorm room, just on our carpet, which I have here. Um, a lot of people have cried on this carpet and had multiple mental breakdowns because college can be rough. But, you know, that's part of the bonding experience. And I still keep in touch with all of those people. And from time to time, we talk about, hey, remember that one night we all did that homework together? Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten through it without you. So I'll joke about it and, you know, just kind of make the, the Iowa just makes the experience of people you meet just make it easier. Um, as you go on. <laughs> that might have been a little bit like sad, but like it had a good twist. Like I, it's a fond memory now. 
Shahana, don't scare them away, please. <laughs> um, so I want to thank you all for coming. We are at time. I don't want to keep people late. But I will say, if you have additional questions, um, you can email us at ilas-honors at umd.edu, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, please include, if you decide to preference ILS, please include your AP and IB, um, community college or whatever transfer information um, that you have that will help us with the decision. If you have additional questions, we're happy to um, answer them. And we're so happy you came to learn more about ILS. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing you guys in the fall. Um, is there anything you want to add, Chantal? <laughs>